So tell me, what is your objective by, with writing this book? You have, I know you have a mission. You have a big mission in life. Tell me about your mission and tell me about the impact that you want, that your book has on the planet. What is your vision for that? Well, I've been teaching about relationships for over 25 years, and you know, I want to bring peace to this world. I think we're all born to try to figure out how to bring peace to this world, and I think it, where I can contribute is when men and women are, are more in harmony, it's certainly going to make a better world. I see that my men are from Mars, women are from Venus ideas have helped a lot. But I see that today, particularly due to changing roles with more women in the workplace, mm -hmm. my earlier books didn't address that at all. Mm -hmm. And there is more stress than ever before. There's more of a thought that, you know, well, we both go to work, should we both should come home and do the same, same jobs and whatever. It's not that way. It doesn't work out that way. And it doesn't work out when men expect women to behave the way men do in the workplace. See, it's like what we need is a workplace to gradually be transformed. And it, women aren't feeling the nurturing they need in the workplace. And if women think men should be like women at home, men aren't going to get the support they need, and they're going to run out of energy. And then you're going to have two stressed people at work, and you're going to have two stressed people at home. Men and women have a power to nurture and support each other to relieve us from all these new stresses and burdens that are in the world. But we've got to get it straight. We've got to learn what are the most important things a woman can do for herself and not expect a man to do it all. And how can she enlist the support of men to get her, give her the support she needs. And men have to be willing to do it and be motivated to do it. But it's a two-person process. Mm -hmm. And of course, if it's the man who reads my book, he doesn't need his partner to read a book. He can get all the information and start doing it. But you know, I'm talking to women. If a woman, you know, often women say, my husband will never read this book. And sometimes that's true. And they'll tell me, but you wrote it so that I could still get a huge amount of support, improve my relationship, by simply understanding how he thinks, how he feels, how he reacts, instead of taking it all personally and realizing that this is the guy, although he may be sleeping and taking a nap right now, if I was in danger, he'd risk his life. He'd give up his life to save mine. That's a lot to say. This man is truly very noble, but often women don't know how to bring out the best in men, and sometimes men can't find the best. I believe it's women who help men discover the best of who they are. And when women forget how to be women, the whole world is lost. Mm -hmm. That's the first time I actually hear, uh, and I'm realizing that women also need nurturing. Like we, I think as women, we, we know we're raised as, you know, we have to take care of our men and be nurturing with them. But I've never heard the term, like a woman needs to receive nurturing from her man, which Wonder is a beautiful, you know, for me, like it really opens up something. So yeah, thank you well, for that. You're very welcome. And that's kind of the message. I think it's chapter two in this Why Mars and Venus Collide. It's presenting to women, because so many women want to nurture everyone. They want to give life to the world. That's yes. who they are, these beings of love. The way to nurture a man best is to give him less and allow him to nurture you more. Because when men feel successful in making a woman happy, then men are happy. The old saying is when mom's happy, everyone's happy. And this really applies to men. So allow him to be successful. But in doing that, it's like learning a lot of new communication skills because women unknowingly send messages his way that he's a failure or he doesn't do enough or he can't do enough. And they're not really meaning that, but often men hear that. And sometimes they're meaning it and thinking they're going to change him, and that really doesn't work at all. <laughs> so we both have to wake up, and I feel like this book is a whole new level of awareness, helping us understand how our brains are different. I talked about how our stress centers are different. I talked about how women have more uh, blood flow in the brain. Men's sense of timing is different in the brain. You know, like when a woman's talking, he's immediately thinking, how long is this going to go? <laughs> Whereas two women having a conversation, it just go on and on and on. So men are like always like thinking, how am I going to solve this problem? How am I going to fix this? And so if all a woman has to do so that he'll really appreciate what she's saying and hear her better is simply say, you don't have to fix this. You don't have to solve this. Mm -hmm. Now, on the other hand, as I go further into this book, I also talk about more than just when men and women misunderstand each other, which causes stress, is then the, s the symptoms of stress is gradually we lose the love. And when people lose love, they start fighting and they're mean to each other and they resent each other and they give each other the quiet, the s silent treatment, they withhold sex. All kinds of things go on in relationships that are not loving at all. And you talk to people about it and they often, as a therapist, they say, well, I do this and this and this, but he did this and this and this, or she did this and this. And we justify our behaviors by our partners. There's, there's no justification. You can't justify your unloving reactions by your partner's unloving behavior. 
Now that's hard. I know that's hard. But what I do is give people alternatives, teach them how to do it. First of all, how to make sure you don't have the problems in the first place. And when they happen, how do you deal with it when the tension's building up? And three, if the tension has built up and you both behave very poorly with each other, how do you make up? So once we have collided, how can we come back together again? And it's just, this is a science. This is not something that's easy. I spent over 35 years of my life learning how to do this, helping couples fall in love again after they've started to hate each other. Because if there's hate, usually there's love behind it. They just didn't know how to find it. And these are techniques that certainly my Mars Venus counselors, I have hundreds of Mars Venus counselors around the country. They uh, pra practice these techniques, but what I've done is simplified them towards the end of the book if you have an argument and a fight, how you can make up, how you can apologize in a way that will work, and how you can really sincerely come back to your relationship realizing that you are a part of the problem and it's not just your partner. And that's why I encourage this message just to people who aren't even thinking about a relationship or if they're single, look back at your past relationships so you don't end up feeling like a victim. Because whenever you feel like a victim, you just keep creating being a victim in your life. And maybe you were a victim, but at least you can go back to the time where some little intuition, some thought inside of you said, you know, I shouldn't be with this person. And you didn't listen. So then, therefore, you helped create that situation. And I'll tell you, the, the easiest way to bring out the very mm -hmm. worst of someone, because everybody has the potential to be bad. Everybody has the potential to be good. To bring out the worst in someone, continue loving someone and being and trying to love someone that you don't love. Continue being in a relationship where you care about someone, but you don't appreciate them, you don't trust them, you don't accept them, you want to change them, you want to improve them, you don't find anything good about them, but then you say, oh, but I love them, I love them. That's not love, that's some kind of neurotic sickness. You're afraid of leaving, you're afraid of the guilt you'll feel, or you're afraid of not finding someone better. Whatever the reasons, there's lots of different reasons, but we have to start taking responsibility for when we stay in destructive relationships. Instead of always pointing the finger, realize how we unknowingly often continue to bring out the worst in someone. And as you start to see how you are responsible for the results you get in your life, then you have the power to create the results you want to create in your life. That's the turning point. When you start giving up blame in your life, then you can start creating the relationship of your dreams. And the same thing is true with success. When you stop pointing the finger at other people, blaming them for your failures, and start realizing that you are responsible to create your success, not just in relationships, but everywhere in your life, then you can be on the road to making your dreams come true. But feeling like a victim in any arena is not going to create success in your life. It just keeps you drawing in that whole situation where you're disappointed, you're betrayed, you're not getting what you need. Yeah, maybe you didn't get what you need, but how did you end up putting yourself in that situation? Forgive, let go, and move ahead. So it's great about finally understanding why Mars and Venus collide is it makes sense to you. It's really hard to let go of the past and realize how you created problems in your past when it looks like it was all that other person's fault. Well, when you start understanding the way they think differently, how your body, how your brain works differently, then it all begins to make sense. And that's another gift that's part of my gift to the world is I try to make sense of things. And that's what people tell me all the time when I read this book. Now it makes sense. And when it makes sense why things didn't work, then you have confidence that you can make it work. So it's not more work, it's actually simplifying. Always simplifying. I see so many people struggling, and I as a guy kind of go, ugh, when people say you have to work on a relationship. I rarely work on my relationship. I enjoy my relationship. I have a fun relationship, you know, but it's because I know how to do it. Clearly in my job, you know, as a writer and a, as a speaker and developer of ideas, I enjoy that too. I wouldn't call that work either, but it is work because I enjoy and I have confidence. So people struggling on their relationship is really just not having confidence because they don't know what they're doing. They haven't been taught. We don't know what we're dealing with. You know, this should be one of the most important things that's taught in school is how to communicate, how we're different, how we can understand each other better, causes of stress, how we can remove stress in our life, and then how we can help others to remove stress in their life.